We stopped looking for monsters under our bed when we realized that they were inside of us. Charles Darwin. Please remember that I'm not a financial advisor. They're preparing us for the Great Reset. Please keep your friends and family aware. Like, subscribe, share these videos. The pandemic may bring us to a decision point sooner than we had anticipated. Sooner than we had anticipated. Sooner than we had anticipated. Next, I'd look to, like to look at the major program of payment system modernization that is now underway in Canada. Consumers and businesses will start to see the benefits of this modernization rolling out this year and next. The pandemic has underscored the importance of expanding the reach of real-time payments. A debt implosion that can eclipse the Great Depression by exponents. The system needs to update to withstand the easy money, to withstand the leverage. Today, at the same time, uh, some of the core infrastructures in the U.S. have been lagging. I don't think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's embarrassing in any in any way for vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Fed to say that. I mean, the Fed has, for instance, decided on uh, upgrading uh, uh, the um, and, and moving to a fast payment uh, architecture, uh, and so they, they've been lagging down that road. Uh, we've seen countries like, say, Australia leading the, leading the way. Europe has come later. Uh, the U.S. are now coming. They are catching up there, and uh, there is so much going on in the U.S. Uh, fintech that I'm, I'm absolutely sure that the U.S. will be uh, at, the, uh, at the leading edge of that, uh, of that journey. And the Fed, is, as the Fed is very active, really. So we have, uh, we have intense uh, relations with the Fed, uh, and, uh, and whatever we do at the BIS in terms of innovation, uh, I'm sure this will be uh, very closely coordinated with the Fed. The Fed has updated its payments rails in preparation of the Great Reset. So we have 100 plus on the, on the outer circle, about 35 or so on the middle circle, and then we make predictions on where our customers might go, which are the protocol platforms that our customers might use. Those are the platforms that I put, you know, that I call that the inner, inner circle, circle. And then we make predictions on where our customers might go, which are the protocol platforms that our customers might use. Those are the platforms that I put, you know, that I call that the inner circle, inner circle. Where we develop, you know, we always develop deep uh, skills on and using various ways. This video clip is from a Tata Consultancy webinar. TCS is the second largest Indian company by market cap. Tata Consultancy Service is now placed among the most valuable IT service brands worldwide. And RippleNet is in their inner circle. You know, having to convert uh, from Canadian dollars into uh, Remnimbi to use uh, to use a digital Remnimbi would do, it's just not something most Canadians would 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 think of doing. And so, and so, there's not really the kind of first mover advantage in the sense of actually uh, uh, threatening to make inroads on our on our uh, financial system. But we can certainly imagine a situation where other central banks would launch. A digital currency that could uh, that could come to be used increasingly in Canada, and that's something that we would certainly uh, want to look out for because it it could actually, if that were to happen, if if a, if another central bank's digital currency were to start to get used in Canada, then that could be a uh, that could start to threaten our the role of the Canadian dollar in the Canadian economy, and in a sense would be an infringement on our monetary sovereignty. So that's certainly something we would uh, we would have to be alert to. Currency is a serious racket. Wars are fought over who controls currencies. Digital currencies do not have borders. That's China. And I think there you'll see the Biden administration take a slow, deliberate approach. Whenever anyone asks them about this, they say, we're reviewing it. We're reviewing all of the Trump executive orders. We're reviewing the trade deals. I was on a Zoom last night with a Chinese foreign minister. You know, the line was very tough that's coming from China. So I think none of us should expect that things will snap back to normal between the US and China like they were in 2015, 2016. Digital currencies are intertwined with the economic wars that we are in. The current system is favorable to the US due to the world reserve status of the dollar. Well, what I see is, uh, is everyone proceeding with quite a lot of caution, right? So even though, even China, I mean, they are clearly, I mean, they are experimenting a pilot. They are very advanced technically. 
but uh, they they proceed with a lot of caution on the on the regulatory and on the political side, right? So they will they will they will think twice about it be, be before pressing the pushing the button uh, and uh, and uh, and making it, making it available across the country. When we see nations rolling out digital currencies, it's because they have approval, or this economic war would be a hot war. Phase one of the trade deal was signed. It was January 14th, 15th, depending on the time zone you were in. And shortly thereafter, of course, the outbreak. So COVID changed everything. But it does seem as though the Biden administration is going to keep these tariffs in place. But it's not only the tariffs we're talking about, Julia. As you well know, we're also talking about the intense pressure that's been put on Chinese companies, everything from Huawei to Schmick to Sinoc. So those are, as of now, going to stay in place. The Biden administration and President Biden himself seeming to not want to praise the Trump administration for putting those in place, but as you mentioned, not rolling them back just yet. And it's interesting because you look at the strategy here and something you and I have looked at over the past several months, and that is that perhaps this has not put the Biden administration in a corner so much as given them leverage now to deal with China. The yes. bank will continue to explore the possibilities of a digital currency that would be an electronic version of the bank notes that Canadians already trust and rely on. We would issue such a currency only if and when the time was right, with the support of Canadians and the federal government, and with the best evidence at hand. Nations around the world are carefully rolling this out. A new system, a reset. Digital cash, right? So I think when we start to, well, as we start to get into these production deployments of central bank digital currency, which will happen, it's all about timing, it's all about timing, it's all about timing, um, that question will become even more important. But for now, we're incredibly focused on this time to value, shortening this time to value. And then from there with these live ecosystems, how do we help them integrate to existing services, existing networks, especially and increasingly you know, on the payment side? Blockchain technology has been adopted and countless walled gardens have emerged. But how do we get value from one walled garden to the next with crypto? And I very much see CBDC being at the heart of the system and also contributing by itself, by, by its mere existence to the interoperability of the system, because any, any means of payment can be converted into CBDC, right? And that's a, that's, a no, that's a traditional function of money, actually, to help conversion, right, across different means of payment. And, and, and that has to be true also in the digital world. So that's the first thing. In this digital world that's emerging, how will they convert one CBDC to the next? As I mentioned at the beginning of my speech today, we have identified numerous pain points in cross-border payments. Technological shortcomings certainly pose problems with different messaging standards in different countries. And then you have cross-border interoperability, which is, to be honest, more challenging uh, because um, it's not so easy to create global standards. We do have global standards. We have uh, ISO 2022 when it comes to, to messaging. Uh, we, we can have other technical standards, uh, but uh, it, it takes time. Uh, it, it will take a lot of cooperation with the industry to, uh, to, um, uh, to produce that kind of standards. And even though, as I said, I see a lot of goodwill and, uh, and cooperation spirit among, the, among central banks, you might fight political hurdles. Let's be, let's be clear about it. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the spirit of, of the time, the zeitgeist, is not for international corporate cooperation. Let's be clear about that. And so uh, we, we're not going to have a legal, an international legal framework for CBDC. That's not going to happen, right? So what we want to identify is a kind of minimal technical requirements to make it work internationally without asking too much from parliaments and politicians because they will not follow us. They will not go. Crypto is trust. When the world can't trust each other, they can trust math. We're actually more in line with another group of central banks, which are more advanced country central banks. And we've been actually partnering with a group of them, with six other central banks, uh, to, uh, to explore these ideas. And, we, uh, and, and th those central banks are largely looking at it in a similar way to the way I've been describing in my speech and in other communications. These seven central banks, what are they up to? And what role will the IMF play? A competition, right? A, a, a race between nations, uh, because uh, because that's about the that's about how the international monetary system works, right? 
And that has always been, at least since 1945, right? Since 1944, actually, when we, uh, when the IMF was created, uh, we've always had quite a lot of cooperation around the international monetary system because we wanted to be stable and we wanted to we wanted to work. It, it, any effort to launch a central bank digital currency would, of course, uh, have to be. Um, you know, the result of, of uh, public discussion, it would be a decision of the government to uh, to, to go ahead and, and, and create such a digital currency. Uh, We're all taught in basic macroeconomics that if you do massive monetary stimulus, eventually you'll have inflation. So far, we haven't seen it. it seems that most economists I talk to both on the left and on the right of the political spectrum say they're more worried about a Japan type scenario of stagflation and low economic growth. So they're willing to just pump it all in. Um, but yes, as a traditionalist, I've been taught to worry about inflation and also enormous budget deficits. So maybe some reason will prevail again, but right now the fashion is not that. The fashion is massive stimulus, both on the monetary and at least from the Democrats, also on the fiscal side. They're going to max out their debt before they reset the system to a tokenized system. I am not apt to follow blindly the lead of other men. Charles Darwin. If you enjoy my work and wish to support my channel, please consider joining my Patreon. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing. Remember to hit the bell.